In this video, we are going to modify the object pool script so that it actually works like a real object pool. Because right now it isn't really an object pool, it's simply just a script that creates an object for us and returns it. Um, a real object pool needs to check if the object already exists and then reuse that object. So uh, that's what we have to do in this video. So let's get to it. Um, our object pool is right here. So let's open up that script. So right now, as you can see, we're just looking at the object prefabs and then we're spawning a um, an object based on the name we are asking it for. What we have to do is to make sure that we are reusing the object. So first of all, we need to make sure that we can actually reuse whatever um, has hit the portal for example let's say that a red monster walks through the level and the red monster despawns next time we spawn a monster we also need a red monster so instead of creating a new red monster uh, we will have to reuse the red monster from before so first of all we'll have to make some functionality so that our monsters can be reused and to do that, we can add a function to our monsters that has uh, that releases the monster from the game so that we can reuse it, right? So let's um, take a look at the monster first. We have a monster here. In here, we will have to create a new um, new function here. So let's make a private void called release. And this function needs to be called whenever the monster actually hits the portal this release function needs to use the object pool. So the object pool also needs some other functionality. It needs a release function as well. So I'm going to make a public void release object and then take in a game object called um, object or let's call it game object. And let's just do like this. Okay. So this release object function will actually have to release the object we're asking it to release. And how do we release an object? Well, um, we actually just have to make it inactive in our game because then we can take a look at all inactive objects and see if we can reuse any of those inactive objects. So the release function is very simple. We simply have to say game object dot set active false. So now we are setting the object inactive, okay? Um, the thing is that inside our monster here, we have a release function. And the monster's release function has to have a little more functionality because every single object that uses the object pool might have to do something different. So that's why the object pool only sets the object to be inactive when it releases it, while the release function here in the monster will do lots of other things, for example, resetting the position, uh, making sure it doesn't have debuffs on it whenever we are starting to use debuffs. For example, if a red monster goes through the level, he gets a fire debuff to reduce health, he gets slowed and everything, and then he reaches the portal. That red monster or that monster needs to reset those or remove those uh, debuffs. So we will also do that later here in the release function so that we can reuse a red monster. Um, whenever um, we need to use a red monster again or a monster again. For example, if we don't remove debuffs and everything here, well, then when we reuse the monster, it will spawn with debuffs and slowing effects and reduced health and all those things. So release will also set the health back to 100 and so on, right? So that's why we need this release function because now we are starting to reuse objects. So we'll have to reset everything whenever we release it from the game so that we can reuse it without having to worry about the health and the debuffs and so on. So right now it doesn't need a lot of code because we will build it up slowly. Um, but let's just take one thing at a time. First of all, we need to say um, game manager dot instance dot pool dot release object game object. So what we're doing right now is that we are simply calling this function here that makes the game object inactive whenever it hits the red portal, right? Because this release code here has to be called when we hit the red portal. Okay, right now we are just destroying stuff um, somewhere. Let's see if I can find it here. 
right now we are destroying the game object when we hit the red portal but we are not interested in that anymore because the game object needs to keep living in the game so we can reuse it so instead of destroying it we simply have to call release there we go so now we are executing release which makes the object inactive so let's try this let's save this jump back into the game and play it then we'll see that it turns inactive when it hits the red portal here And we can see we have the red monster here. And when it hits the portal, it gets small, and it is inactive. Don't worry about the blinking here. Um, it's it, it's only in play mode here. In the, in the editor, it does that thing, that debug, uh, that little bug. So it's nothing you should worry about. So now we have the red monster, and it is actually um, inactive, and it's not visible in the game anymore. Right now, we're not reusing anything. We're spawning red monster. So we spawned a new one here. In reality, we would have to reuse this one so we don't create an extra object. So let's um, let's try to write the code so we can actually recycle it a little. Well, to do that, we will have to go back to the object pool script and we'll have to make another loop here because this code here creates a new object and it should only be re, um, re executed if we don't have another object to reuse so let's say we spawn a blue monster and we only have uh, had red monster so far then we need to create a new blue monster to spawn it right so we have to make some other functionality here to check if we already have an inactive object of the specific type so that we can reuse it and to find um find a what is it called a an, a game object uh, we have to make a for each loop and we have to run through game objects and we call every single object key O as game object. So what collection do we have to run through? Well, we need to create a new collection up here. Um, private list. And you can see we don't have list. So we have to write using system.collections.generics. So now we have the lists, okay? So basically we can call this pooled it should have game object of course and we call it pooled uh, object list there we go so now we have a list of pooled objects this list will contain every single object that works for our object pool right so we will also have to go to our function here because down here we are creating new objects which means every time we create a new object we will have to add it to the object pool so that we can reach it and check if it exists before we create a new one, right? So let's say this code here, we spawn red monster, it creates a new red monster, and then it needs to say uh, pooled objects that add new object. Because we just created a red monster, right? So now we have it in our pool. Next time we create a monster, it also creates a red monster. So instead of going down here, We'll have to look through this list to check if it already exists and then reuse it instead. So for each game object in pool objects. So if that game object we're looking at inside pool objects, if the name of that one is equal to the type we want to spawn. So if we already have an object inside pool objects, of the type that we want to spawn let's say we have spawned a red one before and we need to spawn red one again well then we need to check if the name um, is equal to the type and we need to check if go dot active in hierarchy so this line of code checks if the object is active in the hierarchy which means that if i take the a star debugger and do like this then it's not active that's what happens to every single object that hits red portal. So if that's the case, it's not active, well, then we can reuse it, right? But if it is active, then we can't reuse it. So we're actually looking for an object of the same type that is not active in the hierarchy, which means we can respawn it and reuse it. And then we say, if we find that, we say active true. And then return the game object. So instead of going down here and creating a new object, 
we simply check the hierarchy to check if we have one already and we check if the type and then we return it and respawn it and return it so let's try to save this and give it a try we need to spawn two identical monsters for this to work so let's just spawn a few here purple red blue yeah, green 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 blue okay so now we have at least one of each so let's just uh, let them all despawn and then see what happens next time we try to spawn a monster see they despawn here they all become grayed out maybe it's hard to see in the video but all these monsters here are now inactive as you can see they're not checked here so they're not active in the game if i click the next wave button it spawns a new monster so there are two things wrong here it actually took the green monster that we already have which is totally fine but the problem was that it had turned its back so it has the wrong direction and it also came out of the portal way too fast right it started w moving before it actually came out of the portal so we need to fix that as you can see if i click next wave you'll see that it does the same so what can we do to fix that so to fix this we will have to go to the monster script and go to the release function because right here we will have to make sure that the monster can't move before it spawns or before it's done scaling up and the reason that it, it's moving before it's scaling up is because in the scale up function here let's see if we can find it here um yeah in the scale function we're setting active to true right when we're done scaling but active is never set back to false again so it will actually start moving before it's done scaling next time it spawns right so to fix that we simply say that active is active is equals to false so now it will not start moving until it's done scaling so let's just check if this works spawn a lot of monsters and then you can simply check if if this works if we can get some different colors here there we go now we're sure that next time we spawn one after the despawn um we will check this uh, moving thing so now when i click it should just stop like it does no normally it should pick one of these and then it should scale up and then start moving scale up and then start moving okay it also picked one of these but it was turned the wrong way the reason that it's turned the wrong direction is because his grid position is wrong his grid position is actually at the uh, red portal and the starting position is way up so it starts to animate as if it would walk from the red portal towards the start position so to fix this we can say grid position equals and then we need to go to the level manager find the blue spawn right click on it quick actions encapsulate field go down here and remove set so that we have this code here. if you can't encapsulate field you can just write this code by yourself and it should come up with this just write blue spawn with small here if it changes that and then we can go back here and say grid position equals to level manager that instance dot blue spawn and save okay if we jump back here now and run the code and next if we just spawn a couple of mods maps here lots of purple ones let's just see get a green one also it's fine let's see what happens now so now all our monsters are despawned next time I spawn a monster if it's one of the same colors that we have it took the red one and reused it and it didn't turn the wrong way because now the starting grid position is up here so now we actually have an object pool that we can use to respawn our monsters and later we will also use that object pool to actually um, spawn our projectiles for every single tower so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it like my facebook page and follow me on twitter also remember that inscope studios is a community final page so all your support is very important to me you can support me in different ways you can do it by going to the patreon page or you can do it by going to the 
uh, page in the bottom of the screen where you can get one single uh, project or on the Patreon page where you can go and get every single project that I've ever created. So thank you very much for watching.